Hello, so today I'm going to do a proper video on the PD500, which is a terrifying old vacuum tube that was used in early colour televisions, was mass produced, used all over the Western world. I think the Soviets had something pretty similar that was pr probably just as scary, but basically the PD500 is what's called a shunt regulator, or a shunt tube, a shunt valve, and what its job was, was basically, I think, to keep the image pretty precise on an old colour CRT, cathode grey tube television. Now, these actually warn you on the, like, you know, the glass of them and everything, that these create x-rays. Now, I think it might be a bit worn off of this one, so if I show you on this one. So here's a proper vintage one, I'm not going to be using this particular one, because how vintage it is, but, um, so it's in its little polystyrene egg thing in there, and the actual tube says, if we have a look at it, there we go, Mullard PD500, and it says, um, Caution, x-rays do not operate without shielding. Now hopefully that will be visible to the camera there. But um, these have a bit of a reputation with old TV repairmen at probably giving a lot of them cancer and killing them. Um, and this is one of those things where you get a lot of scepticism around it. You know, people saying, oh that's nonsense, these tubes couldn't give people cancer. Um, and what I want to do and prove in today's video is these do give off pretty scary levels of ionising radiation even when operating in their normal, you know, standard kind of thing. So, I'm not going to heat the filament up on this, but I believe it would give off even more radiation if I heat the filament up. But these, I think, generally were meant to run about 25 to 30 kilovolts in most old colour televisions, but they could run higher. And obviously we're imagining that in old televisions, um, lots of the electronics weren't very precise at regulating voltage of old flyback transformers and things like that properly. So basically... The higher the um, voltage going into this tube, the harder the x-rays are it emits. So, from what I understand of x-ray physics, if you had 30 kilovolts going into this tube, you'd get about 30 keV energy coming out, that's kilo electron volts. If it got close to 60 keV going in, you'd get 60 keV coming out. The higher the number, the harder the x-rays, the more dangerous they are, you know, the more penetrating. So, how these were meant to work in old televisions were that they would basically be inside their own little metal box and the idea was that that metal box would stop most of the x-rays and then I guess if you weren't sitting too close to television you'd be alright. But as said, these have a bit of a reputation where often the TV would be repaired, um, you know, they'd not be put back in their, like, protective box. Maybe some t models of television didn't have the protective box around them, you know, somebody sat too close to television. And there's lots of stories of TV repairmen from around the 60s getting horrible cancers, you know, a lot of them sadly dying. Um, you know, unexplained cancers, not, not like smoking or drinking related cancers, but just various cancers that would tie in with radiation exposure. So what I want to do in this video is show that some of the hardened meters I've got, which, you know, shouldn't be set off by EF interference, like a lot of the guide counters do, will go off when this thing's running. So... There's an interesting, I think, German blog post on this where somebody like found out a lot of the technical specs of running this as an x-ray tube. But basically, once you go above 55 kilovolts, you start to get cold cathode discharge, you know, and the tube starts to almost burn itself out. So I don't want to do that in this video. What I want to do in this video is show you, you know, how much potential radiation it could be giving off even when it was operating in a level where the tube wouldn't burn itself out. Because in theory, you could get exposed to a lot of radiation if it went really high, but then it would burn itself out, so that's kind of like a safety thing. But what we want to do is see how much radiation this thing could have been spitting out day after day if it wasn't going to burn itself out. So probably in the 50 to 55 kilovolt levels of electricity, you know, assuming your TV wasn't overheating. So I've got that massive Chinese power supply that's arrived, the 60 kilovolt one, 10 milliamp. And what we're going to do is basically just start dialing um, this thing up, and um, it's meant to start at 5 kV. You'll notice to start with it won't be giving off any emissions whatsoever, and then, you know, it'll get to a certain point where the x-rays will start being generated. So to measure the emissions coming off of it, um, we've got 3 meters. We've got a CDV717, we've got a British MD3 dose rate meter, which is the upgraded Mark II Radiax, and then we've got a Thermo Fisher... Um, little modern sort of nuclear industry style decimeter. So basically I'm not going to set all of these um, up in the exact same position, I'm just going to turn them on on the lowest scales and the Fermo Fisher will just be running and what we're going to see is you know if they go off scale being fairly close to the tube and then if so we can turn the scale up or move them further back. Um, I'm going to use this on the extension lead so I can get as far back as possible. If you saw the video the other day you'd see that this does create x-ray flashes on a uh, mobile phone camera. 
So yeah, I'm, I'm definitely of the belief that these things are horribly radioactive, even though I know I've been speaking to some people in the comments and seen comments on old things regarding them where people saying, oh no, it's just nonsense that these give off x-rays. Anyway, let's uh, give it a go. Right, apologies that the MD3's display is not really going to be visible where it is, but you might see the needle move. So it's on 0 to 3 centigrade at the moment. The CDV um, 717 is on the milli Ronken scale, hence why its needles drifted up a bit because they never really work properly on their lowest scale. So what we're going to do now is turn this on and start dialing it up, and then you should be able to start seeing the meters move in a minute. I think I'm having a bit of a short circuit with the power supply, so let me just sort that out first. Right, I've moved the cables a bit further away from each other. This isn't ideal, but um, obviously I don't want to be next to it holding the cable on like I was doing in the previous video. So let's try again. And you can see the CDVs going up. And it's set off the um, Thermo Fisher. Let's turn that down. And then in a moment we'll try it again. Now I've noticed of this it doesn't always seem to be consistent with the x-rays. I don't know if it's the position of the tube, sometimes how close it is to the ionisation chambers, whatever. But I've noticed, you know, sometimes it seems to set them off more than other times. Um, but there could be quite a lot of factors to that and I don't understand. Um, let's just try turning this round slightly. It's going to probably already be quite hot. Okay, let's turn it round that way so it's facing forwards. Okay. And now let's try again, so let's start dialing up the voltage. Right, that's not as high as I had it go up the other day. Um, but that might be because I've got it on a longer sort of crop clip thing where it's getting more sort of, you know, wanting to go to earth, if that makes sense. But the meter on the um, CDV717 definitely moved, and the MD3 moved a bit, but not very much. So what I want to do now is put the Fermo Fisher at an angle where hopefully we can see the screen of the camera zoomed in, and we'll see how high the meter goes on that. Right, if we can focus on that, it looks like that's saying its total received dose at the moment is 2.1 um, millisieverts. Now bear in mind, I can't reset this because I don't have all the stupid firmware it needs to do it. But let's dial this up again. I've got arcing between the things there because they're too close. Let me move that away a bit. Try again. That's going to ground, so that's not efficient enough. That's the problem when you're using a setup like this, obviously. It works better if you hold your hands on top of the thing, but then when you do that, obviously, um, you're irradiating yourself a lot more. So um, let me just see if I can pop that up like that, and that might work. Right, let's try it like this and see if we have any luck. Right. No, it's nearly all going to ground in a different part of the circuit. So, um, it has, you did see the radiation go up there a bit. Right, I'm going to hold it by hand. I don't really want to do this, but I want to do this just to prove how high the meters will go. So, let's, let's do this then. Alright, as you're hopefully going to see, I'm going to basically just hold this with my hand near the thing. Let's just zoom that out slightly. Um... I can find the zoom button from this angle of the camera. There we go. Right. So, let's dial this up, if I can manage it from this side. And hopefully the Fermo's still in view. Yeah, that's giving off way more radiation now. Um, I'll have to see if I can show you the other decimeters, but yeah. 
the crop uh, clips really lower the effective dose of this. So let's just stick this up there like that so you can hopefully see the screen and do this again. Right, here we go. That'll be enough dose for me. Right, now what I'm going to try and show you is these meters on either side of this thing. We won't use the Fermo for this one. Um, what I'm going to do is try and get the MD3 in um, picture and then the um, CDV in picture. Right, uh, I don't know how well you're going to see that one, but you should hopefully be able to see the needle on the CDV. So here goes, I've set the CDV to 0 to 5 Ronken and that one to 0 to 30 centigrade. Let's go. Now you can see some cold cathode discharge inside it now. I can't see what the um, British one's reading. You can see the needle's moving a bit, but that's it. But yeah, that's overheating now, so it's not going to give off x-rays as efficiently. Um, but what I'm hoping this proves anyway, is that this thing does indeed produce x-rays. Um, the, the, you know, the warnings are there for a reason. Um, because, yeah. Right, what I can do is if I can somehow keep this on there um, without it moving, maybe I can do it out of a clothes peg rather than the crop clip. What I want to do is basically get one of those rechargeable decimeter pens, um, set this off from a distance, leave it on for maybe a minute without it going into the overheat mode, and then see what sort of dose the um, decimeter pen gets. So let's see if I can do that on the video before I finish it. Okay, so I've got a British decimeter pen that goes from 0 to 50 millisieverts, at least I think it was 0 to 50 millisieverts, one of the US ones that goes from 0 to 200 Ronken. So I've got a closed peg holding that thing on. So what I'm going to do is flick this on. And then set this about three quarters of the way up. Turn this on. I should tell you what, I'll turn it on to the point where it starts to get cold tube discharge. And I'll flick it down slightly. So let's run it like there where we can hear it sparking. Um, we'll give it a moment. Again, this is a bit of a horrifying thing to do. But we're doing it for the interests of science and to prove that yes, these old TV repairmen really were getting fucking irradiated by these things. Um, I'll give it another 20 seconds or so. I'll be looking at the timer on my um, camera for that. So yeah, uh, you can see a bit of red glow on the bottom there now. So let's turn that down slightly. So the red glow disappears, we'll keep it slightly under the cold cathode discharge level. Because as I said, I want this to be like if you were having it in your TV and it wasn't going to burn itself out, but it was still spitting out radiation. Now this scatters x-rays pretty much everywhere, it doesn't send them in a uniform direction due to the shape of the tube. Right, that'll be enough. Let's um, inspect the damage. Now, as usual, sorry, I'm not going to be able to show you these pens very well through the camera, so you can just take my word for it for what they say. So the pen that was... Um, 0 to 50 millisieverts, that's on about 1 millisievert, and the 0 to 200 Ronken pen, um, you can see the needles moved, but obviously not enough to be an actual figure. So yeah, these decimeter pens have definitely absorbed some x-rays from being there. So I suppose what this proves is, PD500 tubes really do give off x-rays, so you know, um, it was actually a thing of TV repairmen being irradiated. So you know, don't actually, um, you know, get near one. I just want to do one final test, and I've got this set up with the peg to see if I can get a good angle on the British MD3 meter, just so you can get a good reading from that, because that is a very good ionisation chamber. And as you might be able to see from my one, it still is has its original calibration from the early 2000s when the MOD retired them. So let's have a look. Right, I'm going to have it at this angle. I don't know if this will expose it to more or less radiation, but let's have a look. So again, let's start dialing it up. As you can see, it directly translates the dose I'm putting into it, what the x-ray dose is coming out. So 
So yeah, this definitely would have irradiated TV repairmen. Obviously, depending on how well the TV is set up, you might get a very low dose from it, but if you're a TV repairman, I would not want to be around these things full stop, pretty much. 